Shalom, Shalom, Israel. First and foremost, I want to give all glory and honor to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, double honor to our apostles and elders that rule well, and salutations to the hopeful elect out there. I just want to get in a quick lesson about uh, World War III. I'm probably going to title the lesson uh, Wars. You should, uh, you should hear of wars and rumors of wars. I'm going to play this uh, quick little, how long is it, five minute video and get a couple of scriptures and uh, we're going to call it that. I'm going to play a little bit of it and then uh, put some scriptures. Years, a Japanese prime minister has arrived in Tehran to meet with Iranian officials. So Prime Minister Abe is using the trip to warn both the United States and Iran to cool their heels before the situation gets out of control, not just between the two countries, but especially with what's going on with the fighting in Yemen as well, where Iran is on one side, Saudis are on the other, U.S. is on the other. It's a story that uh, bears covering. Meanwhile, there's something else that's going on in the region. So Syria, we got this information late last night and have been following up on it. Syria is confirming that last night it had to shoot down a number of Israeli missiles to stop attacks that were incoming. By the way, I, I want to show you something. T take a look at this map that we put together for you. And we did it right there geographically. There have been six major incidents between Israel and Syria in the last three months. April 13th, Syria intercepts an Israeli strike in Hama. June 3rd, Israel bombs an Iranian base in Moms, pardon me, Homs. May 17th, Syria intercepts an Israeli strike on Damascus. May 28th and June 2nd, Israel hits targets in Quinetra. June 12th, Syria intercepts an Israeli attack. Joining us now is uh, former Pentagon official Michael Malouf. Few people know more about this area than the gentleman you're about to hear from here. Um, is this thing escalating? And if so, to what end? Yeah, you know, it's definitely escalating. That's why you're seeing someone like uh, Prime Minister this is, Abe this of Japan you know right here, rushing there because those there gutter is rats. a crescendo building. And you're seeing those cars the are fact that uh, separately of that, uh, all this, uh, are Trump Israel is pushing right now $8 billion to, are, to are the not Saudis. The and what I'm really concerned about is that those arms, $8 billion in arms, going to to the Saudis at a, at a time that uh, we're escalating with uh, Iran, even though he's saying, yeah, I want to have a talk without conditions. Well, that doesn't fit into the mantra and, and message of, uh, of uh, uh, John Bolton. Help me. Or, as a, or Netanyahu of Israel. By help me as an American understand something, because I, I don't get this thing where I just chalked off six or seven different mm -hmm. attacks, mm -hmm. where Israel is attacking Syria. Yeah. Syria is using an anti-missile uh, missile, uh, defense system. Yeah. And this keeps happening like a couple of times a month. What? Anywhere else in the world, if somebody's attacking somebody, you're in full-out war. What, what, well, what, what do you shown, call this? Well, it, it is aggression. And, and it's against all UN resolutions. And the, the, what the Israelis claim is that they're trying to hit Iranian targets. Hmm. The reality is they're killing Syrian military right now. And what's really disturbing is that those sites that you talk about, there could be at those military facilities the presence of Russian troops. And oh if that happens, if they get killed, it, that's a problem. Well, and the Russians, are, frankly, their general staff is getting fed up with it. That's what's so complicated about something like yeah. this. I mean, you just mentioned that essentially Iran is in Syria. Yeah. Uh, Israel is attacking Syria, but they're using the pretense of they're really attacking Iran. And Hezbollah targets as well. And Hezbollah, yeah. it, which is a part of Lebanon? Uh, yes, it's part of Lebanon, but they have forces inside of Syria. But they have facilities uh, for, for uh, supplies and what have you, and, and that's what the Israelis are trying to hit. They're, they're really trying to send a message and at the same time trying to keep, trying to minimize that. But what's going to happen is that there, there could be repercussions as a result. And then, as you mentioned, Russia and the United States are also involved, and obviously the Saudis are involved yeah, because yeah. somehow you mix in with the situation in Yemen. Yeah. How close are we to having this turn into a full-edged conflagration yeah, of some sort? Very well, close any, any spark could, could, could cause it, very I think. Close. Uh, so it, it cause what? Cause it, what? Let, let's it, be... it, could, it could cause just one episode could uh, create a, a, a havoc throughout the entire region. So, in other words, Israel attacks uh, uh, Syria. Yeah. The missile is not stopped yeah. with using the anti-ballistic missile defense system or whatever the heck it's called, and it hits and kills a whole bunch of people. Yeah. Uh, Syria says, we're not going to have this. They attack back. They, they, they've been showing restraint. In fact, they could have done it. In fact, they were asked not to, not to retaliate. So, okay, let, let's continue the scenario. Israel uh, attacks. Uh, Syria attacks back. 
it, uh, Iran fights on the on the side of uh, Syria. Mm -hmm. Who mm -hmm. helps uh, uh, the United States fights on the side of uh, of Israel? Yeah. Uh, Russia gets on the side of Syria and Iran right. as well. Correct. That's the fear. Yes. That's it, huge. Yeah. It's 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 a powder keg ready to blow up at at any time. What's keeping it from blowing up? Uh, people like Abe and others who are trying to talk to uh, leadership in, in Iran to calm things down, trying to talk to Trump to go and negotiate. But John Bolton and, and Pompeo are not getting that message. They're the ones yeah. who are orchestrating this thing. They're the ones who are working behind the scenes, trying to hmm. get everything lined up. And what I'm really concerned about is that they're going to paint uh, Trump into a corner he won't be able to get Sounds out. Sounds like a familiar narrative. Yes. And, uh, uh, it Michael happened Malouf. before in 2003. We thank you. Fred's a pleasure. I'm Rick Sand and what's really stopping it is the most hot. <clears throat> Let's get into a couple of scriptures. Let me go and wrap it up. I'm going to start with Matthew 24. Shalak here, why is it not? No, oh, there it is. Uh, this is Matthew 24, verse 3. And he said, and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the, of the world? And Yahweh shall answer, and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Mashiach, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So, when you look on the news, every time you turn on something, going back to this right here, watching this video this is wars and rumors of wars right here Israel attacking bombing <clears throat> and and so on and so forth you know that's what's gonna happen on, on, on a large scale World War three that's coming very quickly you know and the fact of the matter is a lot of people are clueless to what's going on a lot of people don't like to watch the news because it's all negative. But you got to pay attention to the time that you live in it. People going to be caught and have no clue what's going on. And next thing you know, missiles are flying in the air. <clears throat> and that, that's how I know that we're at the end. Because it says the sign of that coming and the end of the world. So therefore, Yahweh Shah is getting ready to make his second coming. <clears throat> we get Isaiah. This is... Uh, 54 in verse 16 it says behold i have created the smith that blow of the coals in the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work and i have created the waster to destroy Wait, what is that waster that is talking about it's talking about them the icbms the icbms your nuclear missiles and 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 coming to destroy what israel for one get them gutter rats out of there the people that's not the people and also to for for Babylon the Great, because Babylon the Great, America, is is going to be completely wiped out with missiles. This place is going to be a desert land. There's going to be nothing nothing left here. It's not going to be no Statue of Liberty hand just poking out the ground. You know, have you been watching these movies where you've seen all this stuff desolate and a little bit of stuff standing? It's not going to be none of that. It's not going to be there's just one statue just standing that's there. It's going to be complete wilderness. All these buildings going to be thrown down with fire. <clears throat> Another one. Let's get on these gutter rats real quick. This is Revelation 2 verse 9. It says, I know thy works and thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them that say that they are Jews and are not, but the sin of God, but are the sin of God of Satan. So these, so these Jews, Jewish people, claiming to be us, claiming to have our heritage, is, is in Israel right now. And that's how you know they're not the real people because in in the land of Israel, for us to even the real uh real Jews in Israel to be back in that land, 
there'll be there'll be no more war. So so what's going on right now? You hear wars and rumors of war. And also further in the book of Revelation it says uh the second world is passed, but behold the uh third world cometh quickly. So so how's these how's these the real people? Because these people don't fit up with no fill uh fill up with no biblical prophecy. <clears throat> so they say, no, they're not the they're not the people of the land. They over here having they kosher pork, gay gay parades. Do you think we do you think the real Jews will be having gay parades in the land of Israel? Kosher pork? No. I got one more scripture. This is how you know, this is how you know this is not, they're not the real people anyway. Isaiah, this is 2 and 4. They said, And he shall judge among the nations, and he shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. This is, this is talking about when we're in, we're in the Holy Land. So how, how are the, the Israelis, the Jews, Jewish people, how, how are these the real people if... If it just said that we're not gonna learn war anymore, but 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 what's getting ready to take place? World War Three, all-out chaos, anarchy. This was getting ready to take place, so there's no way they could be the real people. <clears throat> so, uh, that's pretty much. It. I just wanted to get a quick lesson. Just to know World War Three is it, brewing up all over the place, not with just Babylon, but all these other, all these other countries and lands. And uh, hope your brother's been edified. And until the next time, I say.